Good morning, fish heads. Hey guys, it's, uh, it's Sunday morning. It's still Thanksgiving weekend. Um, I'm still having a turkey hangover and a ham hangover and a family hangover in the best of ways. Um, really had a blessed weekend and Thanksgiving. So for all of you out there, I hope that you guys are enjoying the weekend as well. Um, Penn State won yesterday. Go State beat Maryland, which is really tough for me because I grew up in Maryland and uh, I've, I've never disliked the Maryland Terps football program and they've gone through a lot of adversity. Jordan was lost. Um, he passed away this year, one of their players. and So they've, they've had a tough time. They've gone through a lot. And uh, a lot of the times around this time of year, people do have a tendency. It may be there the rest of the year, but for, for many of us, we, we feel that pinch at the holidays a little bit more. So I, before we get started on all of this stuff, which this is really cool and I can't wait to talk about this stuff, but um, I really need to give a heartfelt thanks to the community and um, all of my friends and family who helped donate to Feeding America, which is a fantastic uh, nonprofit 501c charitable organization that concentrates on making sure the hungry don't stay hungry in America. So in a four day campaign, I ran four charitable auctions, gave away some really cool art that was hand done by me and some Jekyll Bait swag. Um, I really, really, really am excited to tell you that we raised $500 in four days, which is awesome. And Facebook is matching that for their Giving Tuesdays campaign. Um, Facebook and PayPal are putting some stuff together. If you want to check out more about how you can help contribute to those that are in need this holiday season, please check them out. Um, there's a lot of a lot of tutorials on, on Facebook about that stuff, but I would be remiss if I did not thank the following people for their amazing contributions in the last four days for this, uh, this charitable campaign for Feeding America. Gerald Novick. Gordon Riley, Ron Mounts, Lorraine Benton, Laura Rogers, Tom Caradella, Mark Allwine, Pat Ergel, William Hopper, and RJ Livingston. Thank you guys so much for helping to end hunger today. Hats off to you. Give yourself a round of applause and, uh, and thanks. It means a great deal. Um, and, and it's always a good thing to, to step out of our, our boundaries and and do some good stuff for the community. So again, I can't thank you guys enough. You're amazing. And, uh, and Jekyll Bates loves you. So let's talk about what's going on down here. What is going on down here? Let's move the lights over and show you. Every once in a while, I get a chance to think out of the box. Um, and I get to create some cool stuff. So I started, I started doing a poison arrow frog, and I, I featured it on one of my spray sessions, one of the most recent ones. I had a blast doing it, but it kind of, it kind of sparked some craziness. So, uh, got a request from a customer to make eight pieces, and um, the, these are poison arrow frog and reptile based patterns. So, just to show you guys a little bit of what we've done now, this one is the little guy that sparked a lot of this. This is the, um, I think it's called the Pasco Poison Arrow Frog, and it is gray and yellow. I featured this one before, but this one started the whole bunch of shenanigans. So we repeated that in a 1.5 DD. This is a very cool snake pattern. The colors are replicated here. And I got a chance, let me pull this up into the light here. I got a chance to do um, a little bit of metallic blue on this. And uh, there's some good stuff that comes from, I wanna say it's Spectratex. That is really, I mean, it just covers. It'll cover any color and you usually don't need to use a primer underneath of it. So that is that metallic blue that you guys are seeing in that one. Just some fun out of the box thinking, and I love doing that. You guys know I love colors anyways. And then it was repeated in this Dinger 100 SP pressing, jerk bait, suspending. 
just, this is fun. I just love doing stuff like this. I don't know why I get so giddy like a school kid when I paint stuff like this, but hey, why not? Um, this is the blue and red poison arrow frog, which I originally did in a popper. That has also sold. But it, it kind of gives me an idea. Um, I love the, the difference, the, the shift from the red back to the light blue to the dark blue. But what I really like is this little border here. So I might start using a couple of different things for crawl patterns. I, I usually run the same crawl patterns for about a year and then I'll switch it up and uh, start doing a little bit different crawl patterns for the next year and when we're about to shift years here because 2018 is gonna be over before we know it, folks. This is just the same thing in that dinger pressing, the 100 SP. It's got the weight transfer system in it. It's good BBs, good rattles. Just a fun, fun, fun set of baits to do. This is also a snake pattern. And we'll show you the pictures of the originals from which these designs were taken at the end of this video. So you can kind of get an idea of what I was asked to replicate in my own way. And the same thing there. So just, just a whole bunch of fun. I love doing stuff like this. And I put this on the page yesterday and uh, we did a quick tutorial on Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting, Michael Orstein, Orstein's page. It's early. Yes, I need to get more of that in me. Um, this is a killer color for this time of year, y'all. It really is. Um, this is the Imperial Craw that I've started doing. And this is what I mean about changing up the, uh, the types of stencils that I'm doing. And these are all hand cut stencils. I've cut all of these. Although I do highly recommend folks like Russ Allen, um, Jonas Summer, Cedar Run has them. Corey Van Vonderen has some really good stencils as well. So check those those guys out. They're all available to you in a number of resources, uh, whether it's a .com or a Facebook page. Go find those guys and let them help you create some cool stencils today. And just a little bit deeper of a gill pattern. For the winter, this is in a 2.5. This is going to go to auction today on the Bass Baits Buy and Barter page. Just KBS is really popping. And you know, I, I've heard pros and cons about KBS, and I'm not sponsored by them. I there's <laughs> there's been a lot of controversy on a couple of different pages about whether or not some of us guys are sponsored by them. No, we're not. We're not. We just we all have a lot of different likes. Um, for me personally, it's just a whole lot easier than mixing two ton just because of the volume of stuff that I'm doing. Um, but it may not be the, the right solution for you guys. So regardless of what you're using out there, I can only recommend what I use and, um, and what I believe in. And I still believe in this stuff, but it gets a little bit finicky. There's no doubt in that as most epoxies do. Um, but it does when you keep it well and you uh, give it enough time to cure. Now it says that it'll cure in about six hours and it's not exactly the way I've, I've found it to be. Usually, I'll leave it hang to dry. There is absolutely no spinning with KBS. You don't want to because it'll actually create bubbles and, and a bit of a nightmare for you guys, so don't do that. Um, but in the same respect, I let it dry for about 12 hours before I even think about pulling it off of the, the drying rack after I've clear coated it. Um, and then I give it a couple more days to harden up. And, and that's just the way things go with, with clear coats a lot of times. Now the Illumilite, I can't speak to, but I've heard nothing but really good stuff. Although it is finicky to set up and you really need to know what you have to do with the lighting because UV is the key. So there's the, and when I hear UV lighting, the first thing that comes to mind is housing reptiles properly because there's a couple of things in, in replication of UV lights that animals need that they can't get unless they're in direct sunlight. So people that keep, you know, uh, reptiles and, and other creatures of that nature, you know, turtles or lizards, snakes, 
I have to get the right kind of lighting and UV is one of the things there's a couple there's UVA and UVB so um, reptile lights would be one of the first things that I would think of like really high like day Kelvin and, and nighttime and, and black lights um, I, I used to keep saltwater fish so that's another thing that you really need to replicate correctly so there's just a bunch of different things out there so check out Illuminolite it's it's not inexpensive to get that started um, it's certainly more expensive than the KBS that I'm using but that's it I've gone about eight minutes here so I, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend thanks for checking out the page thanks again thanks again thanks again for helping me raise money for Feeding America folks if you guys make the difference you may ah, I almost forgot real quick these things um, they've been tested, they've been proven, they're gonna go online. I'm probably gonna wait until the season's over to put them online because I've got an order that needs to come in. Um, and it hasn't, so I'm running a little bit low on these guys, but these four and a half inch dead twitch jerk baits are awesome. And the shad is the perfect color for the winter. So, um, love, love, love these floating dead twitch baits. That's it, folks. Happy casting. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. All the things that are coming up. I hope you are warm and safe and dry with a full belly and a good heart. See you soon. Bye.